Hey everybody, I'm John Soskovich and we're on to 2016 last year, the year before I'm shooting this video on my farm journey of what has happened through the last couple years that led me to where I am today. 2016 felt like a blur, it just blended right into 2017, let's jump right into it. I did a whole bunch of stuff and man, whew, I have no idea. So getting right into 2016, I mean, I kind of had an idea of what I was in for and at the same time I totally had no idea what I was in for and it was a wild, wild summer. I actually forgot a lot of it, I think out of self-preservation that I just kind of like lost those details and the dark recesses of my brain because uh, looking back on it, man, what a wild ride. So I'm shooting this video in my tasting room at the brewery, at the farm uh, for a couple reasons. One, because 2016, 2017 is what put this room together. And that's when we started. In 2016, we were renovating the barn. We got a grant to put solar on the roof. And at the time, you could see through the walls. So in order to put solar on and feel comfortable that it would support the added weight plus the weight of a snow load, we wanted to uh, redo it structurally. Then when we redid it structurally, we were like, oh, we should insulate it and turn it into a barrel aging facility. And then we we're like, oh, it's really nice in here. We should turn it into a tasting room. We just kind of like walk backwards uh, into this idea. And it, it just all, all kind of panned out somehow. So during the summer of 2016, uh, I had your typical contractor scenario uh, where, they said it was <clears throat> where they said it was going to take two months and it ended up taking about eight months uh, and being way over budget and took so, so long. And I won't go into why or how that happened. I don't want to seem like I'm throwing that guy under the bus, but it did not need to take that long. Uh, we could have fit in around the budget and uh, it could have gotten it done a lot faster than that. Stunted the farm a little bit. It also preoccupied my time. Um, maybe I will go into it just because that was a lot of, I had a lot of effort uh, into that last year where I was the project manager for that, uh, managing the contractor on site. I should have been more harsh, more, or, you know, a little bit more verbal, a little bit more angry, a little more aggressive of a person. That's not necessarily who I am when I'm working with people. And, uh, I feel like he got away with a bunch of stuff and especially pushing the timeline out and balancing everything where he wasn't on top of the numbers, which means I had to be doubly on top of all the numbers. Project management on this scale and for this specific type of thing uh, is not necessarily something that I had a lot of training in uh, for building construction, you know, because who does? Um, and. I had to manage this guy and also make a lot of decisions because the landowner wasn't around. Uh, so when our barn was quirky, it had all these different angles, there's like no straight lines in here, at least there really wasn't. Uh, so to manage all of that and have all this custom carpentry done, a lot of decisions had to be made uh, fitting within the budget, within building code, within the timeline, and with what our future aspirations were for the building. All of that, all wrap your mind around all of those decisions on this big freaking building while trying to manage a farm uh, it was Kate and I and one of my buddies part-time on farm that year and uh, even with that small a number of us it was still so much to manage to do chores in the morning uh, to move the farm forward to do our farmers market every week uh, and to have this big building project on top of that building project we also had some site work to do so site work is work where you're doing clearing land uh, or preparing a piece of property uh, for some kind of new construction so the year before this one, 2015, I think it was 2015, uh, we did the site work where we were digging the hole in the ground, putting the brewery up, that was 2014, 2015. Uh, and then 2016, this year, with uh, wanting to open the brewery to the public, we had to put in a septic system. In order to put the septic system in, the area on the outside of the barn also had to be worked on. It had some of the old piping from the milking room because this was an old milking barn. Now, part of my job then, too, was pull, to pull out some of that stuff. We could have either paid somebody to do it, or I had the machine, I had the skill set, I could have done it, saved us some money. Um, so one of the things that I pulled out that you guys will you'll recognize is that I did some digging and got the old wastewater tank that they used in the milk room, and it's that big yellow thing that you see in this picture right here. 
and I cut that in half and those are the pigloos, the uh, pig shelters that I use on pasture now. I dug it out of the ground, it had only had like milk wash water in it, uh, so it was clean, it had sat forever, so everything was broken down. It was empty after I picked it up out of the ground. And um, yeah, I was like, what am I gonna do with this thousand gallon wastewater tank? I'm gonna turn it into pig shelter. And that's what we did. We just took a sawzall, cut it in half, and boom, we were done. So project management on the building, we put in a septic system. Uh, our neighbor came over and did a lot of the work for us there. Thank you, Bruce. And then uh, we opened to the public just for bottle sales. So we couldn't do tastings on the farm, but then we were open for retail. People could come to the farm, see the farm, and get some bottle sales uh, or some bottles. And we give a farm tour every weekend. That's when the farm tour started. So I not only had the farmer's market, but then I had to run home, uh, assist with the bottle sales and retail, give a farm tour, make sure everything was good, manage parking, manage people, and uh, all the while run the farm. I want to say that this was stressful, and it always is kind of stressful in the moment, but you look back and you're like, well, it's part of the job, it's part of what I signed up for. We don't have just a farm here. Uh, we're a farm, a brewery, and then we have the distillery. And so managing at that time the property, and we had some renters, so I was the liaison between the renters and the contractors, and I had to do some handyman work for that. Uh, I had to make sure that the grass kept mowed uh, for the whole property. I had to run the farm, had to help with this building project, uh, and it really just ate up my time and ate up all my energy. And the farm suffered because of it. You know, it always like the, the farm, we wanted to push the brewery agenda forward because the brewery is a bigger, it was more profit driven, you know, it's, it, it makes more money than the farm, surprise, surprise. Uh, so I prioritized things in accordance of where we saw the future of our business going. And knowing that the farm wasn't gonna pull all the weight, uh, prioritized things to make sure that the brewery had what it needed in order to move forward. And that made the farm suffer to cost the farm a little bit more money, uh, but it's, it got us here where we are today. Yeah, I have a, I'm, I'm on a, still on a beautiful property. I'm inside the tasting room that we finished and we have people here every weekend and uh, I'm thankful for that. I changed position, I'm behind the bar. The bar's all shiny and clean and nice and good. What is my takeaway from this video? Making this video hopefully a little bit shorter uh, today. My takeaway here is uh, one, don't take on too much. Don't try to please everybody. They're gonna have, you're gonna have projects and stuff and people come along, people with nonprofits who have an awesome, beautiful mission uh, that you won't be able to help them out because you gotta make sure that you take care of yourself and your own farm and situation first. There are things that you have to look at and manage things holistically where I made decisions that negatively impacted the farm because as a, the business as a whole uh, had to move forward and we were making investments and we were making decisions and judgment calls and there's a lot of interpersonal stuff and there's people involved with this, not just finances and trying to make all of it work, keep the team together. I'm part of a team. It wasn't me holding the glue together, but it was the group of us. And through 2016, we had to make a lot of decisions, have a lot of impact and uh, drive the business forward so that we can continue into 2017, 2018 and beyond. Um, so again, general theme of this, all these videos has been like not managing too much, not taking on too much responsibility, but also adaptability. You know, life comes your way and there's bills to pay and the farm can't always cover it. And sometimes tapping into an external skill set that you may or may not have, hopefully you can develop it. But if you have a previous life, a lot of people who are watching this channel are second career. Um, making sure that, you know, you keep some of those ties, don't burn those bridges, keep some of those skills fresh once in a while. So if you can, if you're fortunate enough to kind of tap back in, earn a few extra cash or do something else to bring, uh, work in, bring money or resources into your farm to help grow your farm, keep your farm moving forward. Uh, I've got a very diverse viewer set. That's you, you watching this video. Everybody's got a different story. And that's why no one farm plan, one farm story fits everything where I can say, this is how I do it. Here's step one, two, three, four, and five. This is how you're gonna be at where you start, in the middle, in the end. All I can give you is how I manage the situations that came up with me and my life and my story, and hopefully you can apply some of those concepts to your story. At the end of the day, it's really important to keep your friends and your family as close as possible to you. You're, they're gonna be the ones to pick you up when you're down, support you when you're in need of support, and my goodness, feed you when you need to eat because you just keep working and working and working. If you're a true entrepreneur and you have this in you, you're, you're gonna have that drive no matter what anybody tells you, no matter what obstacles come your way, you're gonna make it happen. It's gonna to be tough. There are gonna be days you wanna quit, 
But at the end of the day, awesome things can happen if you put your mind to it. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video, and until next time, I will see you out in the field.